Okay. That's what we can said. It's just practice for the, the fighter drill. All right. So I'm going to present my screen. So ahead of time, I'm going to show Jorge what he's going to be doing for reading. So I don't think it's in just yet until we start, but it's this close read right here. So what you're going to do, it says press the add response button to click the link to read the story. And then you're going to do the next slide. So I'm going to add a response like a student. So you have this right here. And so we're going to listen to it really fast. Story. Please answer the questions on the next slide. All right. So here you're going to go to the next slide and click the little question, the quotation marks. Why did the other prairie dogs want to join in on the fuzz celebration? You're going to go back to the story to look for the answer. All right, so that's all you're going to do, folks, for reading. I just wanted to show you ahead of time, Jorge, just because um, we're still going to have that fire drill today. Okay, so make sure, let's check your mask. Mask check, make sure it's over your nose. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start reading. So let me go to high frequency words and I'm going to present. You ready? I do. And then you do. You ready? Answer. Answer. Find. Find. It's. It's. Miss. Miss. Old. Old. Round. Round. Then. Then. Until. Until. Aaliyah, make sure your mask is on. We're not playing with it. What? What? Young. Young. Awesome. All right, now we're doing our spelling words. Remember, we don't have a spelling test this week. It is um, going to be our story quiz, remember? So it's on the Great Fuzz Frenzy that we just read. So let's go ahead and do our spelling words. Tap. Tap. Tape. Tape. Thin. Thin. Fine. Fine. Cute. Cute. Ride. Ride. Robe or rob. Rob, rob, rob first. Rob. Sorry. Robe. Rob. Cap. Cap. Cape. Cape. Good job. You got us confusing I know. Those are a little confusing because I know which one's Wait, coming up today? next. Huh? What's today? What do you mean what's today? Today's Wednesday. Hold your questions. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go straight into reading. Waterfall. Eyes on the target. Okay. All right. So we're going to blend and read. Are you ready? These are a lot of words. Let's practice. Attic. Attic. Picnic. Picnic. Coldest. Coldest. Colder. Older, Older, oldest, oldest tape, tape, nice, nice smallest, 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 smaller, smaller tablet, tablet, kitten, kitten pet, 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 Pete, Pete cub, cub, cube, cube rob, rob, robe, robe pan, pan, pain, pain dim, Dime. Dime. Dome. Dome. Dine. Dine. Uh, pike. pike. Pave. Pave. Main. Main. Mole. Mole. Fame. Fame. Vein. Vein. All right. We did a whole bunch of long and short vowels, didn't we? All right. So number six, we are going to read this together all at the same time. Are you ready? So follow my cursor. Ready? One, two, three. Three, Rose will like the bag, uh, bag game, or the bag game. All right, number seven, you ready? One, two, three. I hope Miss Pam made a nice cake. Good job. Last one, are we ready? One, two, three. Mel is older than Mike and Dom. 
So not dome, because dome would mean that it have a silent E. So it's dom. Dom. All right. So we did really good with the blend and read. All right. So we are going to learn our skill today. And our skill is connect text and visuals. Say connect text and visuals. What does visuals mean? Take a wild guess. Carlo, what's visuals? Do we know? What word does it sound like that we know? Clinton? What is that special word we use for our eyes? Vision. Vision. So visuals mean pictures that we see. Isn't that cool? So right here it says connect text and visuals. Visuals help you understand what the author's words don't say. Think about how the text or the story and the visuals work together. So here is a visual right here. What is this person doing in this picture, Harlow? Um, playing basketball. Playing basketball. So let's read the text. The text says, this is what I've practiced for. Oh, so it doesn't really tell us in the sentence what he's practicing, right? But he's practicing what? Rolando, what is he practicing? How to play basketball. So now that, that we know that we connected the visual, the picture, with what the words say in the bubble, right? So it says here, illustrators show details about the character setting, the character's setting, or events that the text may not describe. So it says, how is the text arranged on the page? This may show a sequence of events. Oh, so look at your text bubbles. Which one comes first? Oh. Mackenzie? The first one. What was the first one say? Um, I knew you could do it, Mike. And then this one says, thanks, coach. The hard work paid off. So which one would go first? Um, the, coach. The, the first one. Well, the coach one says, thanks, coach. The hard work paid off. Well, what is he saying thank you for? What the coach said. So the coach, whatever the coach said comes first before the little boy, the teammate said something. So that tells you which one comes first. That's what, se that's what sequence of events means. I'm waiting. That's what sequence of events means. Which event comes first? So... That's really cool. So it says here, or even which character is talking first. That's good to know, huh? So today, oh, oh so it has a second one. So our second one says connect text to visuals. Visuals can tell a story. Look closely at the art and see how it supports the text. So what's happening in this picture? Bella? There's a where you fish oh, good job. Person. Yeah, there's a person in the boat at the lake, and they are fishing. That's really cool. So one says, here's the first step, what you're supposed to do. Read the text. What did you learn from it? Then two, examine the art or examine the picture. So look at the pictures. It says, look at small parts of the picture at a time. Who and what is the story about? Where does the story take place? Ooh, so where does the story take place in this picture? Clayton, or Clinton, I'm sorry. Clinton, at the lake. How did you know it was at the lake? What tells you that it's at the lake? What does it do? Where, what, does it, what does it look like it's, the art is describing? Mm -hmm. And there's what around him? Water and... Trees, right? So we can tell that he's somewhere at the lake. All right. So it says, connect the text and art. What can you add to the text by looking at the picture? What can you add to the picture by reading the text? So what else could we add in this picture to help us understand what he's doing? Aaliyah, what could we add in the picture? What's he doing? A fish, maybe. Maybe he caught a fish. That's a pretty good one. All right, let's move on. We did really good guessing on this one. So what we're doing today is yesterday we read the story, The Great Fuzz Frenzy. Now what we're going to do is look a little closer. 
Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of pages, and then Mrs. Flinton is going to have you go into Seesaw and finish that activity that I showed you right at the beginning. The reading one? This one. So we have a reading assignment, too, in Seesaw. All right, so in this story, we're going to read these two pages, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? Are you ready? Let's listen. All right, we're ready. So it says, Violet, no. Violet, where's the ball? Down it went. Boink, boink. Run for your life. Watch out below. Thump, thump. Rumble, rumble. Help, help, help. All right, so in this picture, it says, what do you notice about the words boink, thump, and rumble on the left side of the page? So this side right here, or on the right side, so it would be on our right side. So on the right side of the page, boink, thump, and rumble. What do you notice about those words? Let's see. Um, Christopher, what do you notice about those three words? Yeah, what does it have? What do the letters have that we normally don't see in the letters? Capital. They're capital, and what about the in, ending mark? What is the ending mark? Um, uh, uh, exclamation point. Mark. No, it's not a question mark. It's an exclamation point. So that means we can tell that those are loud sounds, right? That's how we know what's happening. They are bigger than the other words. They are in capital letters and have exclamation points at the end. I'm waiting. What do these words help you understand? So Christopher said it helps you notice the action of the bouncy ball, right? The tennis ball. So how are the words different from the left to the right? What's different about those words? These words right here where it says, Violet, where's the ball? What's different about those, Jorge? So the ones where it says, Violet, where's the ball? How's it different from the boink, thump, and rumble? How are they different? So these words right here, how are these words different from these words right here? What do you notice about this, the words? So on the left, we said, on the right, we said they were bigger. So what happens to what's happening to the letters on on the left hand side? Different. They're different. How? Because they both have different exclamation parts. Oh, they have different ending marks. Yeah, they have some different ending marks because we're asking a question on here, right? And then there's a comma in there, but we also have smaller letters, don't we? Yeah, we have the lowercase letters. Yeah, so that's how they're different. Good job, Jorge. So they they have quotation marks. Do you see the quotation marks? Yeah. So the quotation marks are those little commas above the words. That means that the character is talking. Mm -hmm. That tells us that the character is talking. So it says here, they have quotation marks. They tell what the prairie dogs say. So what do these words help you understand? Violet, where's the dog? Where's the dog? Or run for your life. Watch out below. So what does that tell you? It tells you. What the character's saying. And then the bigger ones tell you what? Um, that it's right now. Omar, what are the bigger words? What do they tell you? These ones right here. What do they tell you? Yes, it's telling you that the, the tennis ball is rolling down in the tunnel. Good job. So it's like for loud noises, right? I know that's what else is. 
Mm -hmm. They know what is causing it. All right, so let's take a let's take a look at a, a two different pages. We're going to go to one seventy four and one seventy five. So let's look. We're going to keep flipping until we get there. So there they are, being kind of crazy. I think, well, there we are. All right, so let's go ahead and read this one. Are we ready? It says, what happened? Where's Big Bark? Look, there he was, high above their heads, dangling from the talons of an eagle. No more Big Bark, the crowd cheered. Yay! Don't yay! He's one of us, yelled Pip. We have to save him. How would you like to be Eagle's lunch? No, said the, or the crowd yelled. Big Bark wiggled free. So Big Bark wiggled free, the prairie dog shouted. Shake loose. Hurry, we'll catch you. Big Bark twisted and turned, wormed and squirmed. At last, he was free of the fuzz. Yay, the crowd cheered. All right, so in this picture, we can see what it's, doing. what it's doing. So who are these right here? Who are they? Christopher? They're the prairie dogs. Okay, and what is this big fuzz here? Rolando? Who is that? Big bark. Big bark. And then who is this huge looking object or thing right here? Harlow? An eagle. Oh, what is this? Right here. Oh, I, I, Clinton? Uh-oh. It's a bottle cap, but where did it come from? It's Big Bark's hat. It's Big Bark's hat. That's right. So right here, it says, what happened to Big Bark? What happened to Big Bark, Mackenzie? The eagle The eagle grabbed him. Yes, he did. It says, why, why did this happen? Why did, why did the eagle... Grab, grab big bark, Rolando. He wanted the fur? Why do you think he wanted the fur, Aaliyah? Hold on. Maybe he, maybe he's a baby. Oh, that's possible. That could be that he might be a baby because baby birds are fuzzy balls, right? Sometimes. Eagles yeah. Baby birds. I but it. Clinton, what do you think might have? Why do you think he might have grabbed him? Maybe he thought it was a baby bird. Harla, what do you think? Yes. So, Melanie, why why do you think that the eagle grabbed Big Bark with all that fur all over him? Because I think the eagle thought it was food. Maybe, oh, she that's a good one. She said that she thought it might be food. That could be the case. How many of y'all know that eagles build nests? Mm -hmm. So what do they grab all the time? Feathers. So maybe he thought he was a big, huge feather to put in his nest. And sticks, too. They grab anything they can to make it comfy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it says here, the eagle grabbed him for lunch. Oh, Melanie was right. He grabbed him because he thought it was food. So it says we really had some good guesses, though, didn't we? So it says here, because he was standing alone yelling with bright fuzz on him. It says Big Bark had to wiggle out of the fuzz to save himself. It says, how does the picture help you understand how stealing fuzz led to this problem. How does this picture help you that the when Big Bark stole the fuzz, how is that the problem of the story? 
What happened, Emery? The eagle, the eagle snatched him. That's exactly right. So the eagle probably noticed Big Bark because he was yelling and wearing that bright fuzz. So it says if he had no, not stolen the fuzz, Big Bark might have not, might have stayed out of danger. That's exactly right. So what I'm going to have you do is remember Miss Fullington showed you how to get into Seesaw to do your activity. So you may... Jorge and Melanie, log out of this Google Meet unless you have a question, okay? All right, y'all have a good day, guys, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye, Melanie. Y'all have a good day.